Looking for two is a subject that's often overlooked. How many times that you have said, it is just two of us, let's order pizza. Instead, why not use the occasion to whip up something a little unusual and have a feast, delicious feast, just for two. Today, I'm gonna to show you a very interesting dish. I'm gonna combine everybody's two favorite foods, noodles and pancake, to make one delicious dish, noodle pancake with pork and julienne vegetable. Very easy to do, everybody can do it at home. Here, all we have to do is save time. We're gonna make the pancake first. This is a Chinese fresh pasta, egg noodles, okay? You can buy, use angel hair noodle, you can use anything. And I boil it for about three minutes, okay? And let us sit, let's cool down a little bit, and then I am gonna make this little pancake. Here, I use a tiny, tiny bit of oil. Now, you do not even have to use oil because this is basically non-stick, okay? Move these around, and then I make a small pancake. This is one pancake. Because two people, you make two pancakes, okay? I have one over here, you make two pancakes. And then, when it's brown, let me move them around, make sure one little pancake for one person. And then, let's turn it down a little bit so everybody can see. Then, while I'm making and browning my pancake here, I'm gonna cut up some ingredients which is julienne pork and vegetable, and stir fry and put it right on top of the pancake, it's gonna be delicious. The first thing I wanna show you is this Sichuan pickle, Sichuan jia choy. You, when you buy it, you buy it in a little can like this, you can tell there's a little sign here. Normally they're about three or four pieces inside, they're big like this, look at that, okay? This is called Sichuan preserved vegetable. When you do that, you julienne this, like that, we're gonna julienne, parallel cut, julienne, parallel cut, very thin slices like this, okay? Parallel cut, that's all I need. Most of these can be kept in the fridge for months and months because they are pickled and preserved with Sichuan pickle, chili pepper, and salt. So easy. And then always clean up. In the meantime, huh, we come back here and turn this whole thing down a little bit. And do not, you want to brown the noodle pancake. You don't want to burn the noodle pancake, okay? <laughs> and then we cut up a tiny bit of s s carrot. Slice it first into thin slices. And then you can use this technique too. Look, slowly rest this knife on one end. This is a Chinese chef knife, right? You go downward, forward, downward, forward. You just slide it back and forth, back and forth. This is another way without making any noise at all. This way, you can cut into pieces as thin as this. Look at that. I am truly amazed. <laughs> and then you put this right over here. And then, of course, onion is very easy. You just slice. That's all I need, okay? We put the onion right here, so you have all these ingredients. Now, you can even cut up a tiny, tiny bit of pork the same way, called parallel cutting technique. Very thin slices. Look at how thin this slice is. Look at that. And then you slice another one, and you slice another one, and then you're gonna, very simple to do. All you have to do is stack them all up and Everything is ready. One, two, three, four, five. Well, cooking for two doesn't take too long, okay? That means a lot of these cutting up can also be done ahead of time. You don't have to do it in the last minute. So it doesn't make too much difference whether you do it in the last minute or do it early, okay? Now, the pancake is basically done. Oh, this is a nice pancake. In the meantime, I'm gonna stir fry the pork and the vegetable. This is very unique. Put a tiny bit of these. Oil, put a tiny bit of pork. If you have time, marinate your pork, okay? Wow, little two baby walk. Wow, <laughs> exciting. This is, this is very good because 
just like love, it is framed. <laughs> Getting so excited, put all of these ingredients in there. And also you want to have some green color, put a tiny bit of green onion to give that green color, okay? We'll put this over here, stir, stir. Put a tiny bit of broth, home mixed soup stock. Put a tiny bit of sugar, a tiny bit of Seichon brown bean paste. And then put a tiny, tiny bit of salt, tiny bit of white pepper, tiny bit of soy sauce, and you are okay. And then basically slightly, slightly thicken this up. I'm so glad that when I cook, there is no distraction whatsoever. <laughs> when this is done, you shut it off, shut this off, and I want to show you how beautiful this is. It's very easy to do. And the pancake, all you have to do is slide the whole pancake right here, the whole pancake. So this is for your loved one. You always serve your loved one first. And then, when this is done, you transfer this and put it right on the side. Noodle pancake with pork and vegetable julienne. Our next entree is even more exciting and more interesting for a party of two. It's called Salmon Sandwich. It sounds absolutely wonderful. But you'll be amazed when you find out that I actually used the sandwich as a bread. Let me show you how to do it. Very easy to do. Here, you got to have all these wonderful ingredients first. These are different ingredients. I'm going to put it inside the salmon. I have enoki mushroom, julian celery, julian celery, and also carrot and julian black mushroom, shiitake mushroom. And here I have a beautiful piece of salmon filet right here. And I am going to cut this up into two pieces, okay? Cut this into two pieces. Look at that. Cut this right in two. And then I will cut this Parallel cut again into two, like a butterfly. Look at that. But I will stop right here without going through it. So when you open it up, it looks like this. And it's a sandwich, okay? And I put this right over here. And once again, cut it up like that. Can you see that? Very easy. And you open it up like this. And then you can close it up like that and put it right here. And then to make it nice and delicious, I'm going to quickly, oh, I'll show you very easy to do. I'm going to quickly put a tiny bit of pepper and salt right in the middle here to marinate it first. And then we're going to assemble our sandwich. We have a tiny, tiny bit of enoki mushroom, okay, enoki mushroom, enoki mushroom. Okay, and then I have some carrot, put it right in the middle, carrot. And then I have mushroom, shiitake mushroom, shiitake mushroom. And then I have some couple of celery. So it's kind of stick out a little bit. It looks nice because you can see what you put in. If you bury the whole thing, nothing would show. And then after that, you fold this up, look at how cute. <laughs> you tell your loved one, it's in the cute. <laughs> it's very nice. When it's done, you get ready, and we're going to cook this right here. First, use a tiny bit of oil. Look at that. And then you can brown this on both sides. One. Oh, marvelous and brown it on both sides. Look at this, I hope you can see me. 
brown. And then you're gonna make a sauce. Get ready a sauce. I have, oh, make sure they won't burn. Okay, you don't want to cook them too much on one side. Oh, look at this, this is beautiful. Use a chopstick to move everything up. Oh, look at this. Cooking for two is a lot of fun. Brown it. And then I'm gonna show you how to make this sauce to braise this salmon sandwich. This is lemongrass. I grow it in my backyard. Lemongrass. When you use lemongrass, remove the outer leaves. And then you cut this tip off the end. You don't want it. And you cut this off and you do not need it. All you need is this part, nice tender part, and you cut it in half. There are ways, there are several ways of doing it. One is you press it and then you go like that. Allow maximum flavor to come out, okay? Or you simply just slice it like this without pressing it, if it's thin enough. So you can do it either way, okay? Now, make sure I have some shallot here already chopped. Put it right here. And then also put a tiny bit of rice wine. Okay. Put a tiny bit of fish sauce. Fish sauce, very popular in Southeast Asian cuisine. And of course, a tiny bit of sesame seed oil. And that's all you need. And then you put the whole thing, of course, add a tiny bit of, oh, look at that, a dash of sugar. And then you are ready to Brace the whole thing right here. Just brace it. When you brace this, you cover this up and let it brace for approximately two to three minutes. Low heat, very, very low. Just let it brace so the aroma and the flavor of the sauce permeate into your salmon. And then when you are ready, all you have to do is take this out. Oh, look at that. It's already done. Always remember, the whole thing is out. I'm gonna take this and transfer this and put it right here. And it's so beautiful. And I'm telling you, this is one of my favorite. And right before you do that, you put some extra sauce on top and garnish with the cilantro. One piece over here and one piece over here. You should use cilantro, a nice and clean. Beautiful salmon sandwich for two of you. <laughs> Next, a wonderful asparagus beef roll with teriyaki sauce. It's a dish that also great for the two of you. First of all, you cannot do anything unless you get the beef. And I'm gonna get my beef in the fridge over there because I have been freezing it because it is easier to julienne and to slice when the beef is somehow partially frozen. So get it from the freezer. And then set it aside. I'm gonna remove my noodle pancake and everything else because I have done this and I want to save it for the other loved ones. Make sure you cut this up properly, you see, nice and partially frozen like this. And then I'm gonna get ready all the other ingredients so everybody can see. This is the ingredient. These are the ingredients that we'll be using for this particular beef roll. Before I cut, a lot of people ask me, Martin, how come your knife is so sharp? If you are gourmet, you're a professional chef, you always remember, you gotta maintain a sharp knife because a sharp knife is not only a functional cooking utensil, it's also much safer. A dull knife always slip and it's very dangerous, so make sure to maintain your knife. Most people, they probably use one of these, sharpening steel to keep it home, but you're not really sharpening. Basically, you are, basically, all you're doing is to keep it home, to keep the edge, okay? When I was growing up, we do not have any sharpening implements. All we have to do is use the back of a plate with ceramic. And we just go like that. This is how you sharpen your knife, okay? But of course, don't do it on your antique. <laughs> Be very, very careful. This is how my mother had been doing it for 70 years. 
Now, nowadays in the US or in many other countries, you have a choice of all kinds of sharpening implements. This is the most common ones that most people have, a regular stone. This particular stone have a rough side and have a smooth side. If your knife is very dull, you start with the rough side first. And you, this is how you do it with a Chinese chef knife, because a Chinese chef knife, the blade is wider and a little bit, but it's not that heavy. All you have to do is angle at about 15 to 18 degree angle. Normally a French chef knife, you do it about 18 to about 23 degree angle when you sharpen. You just make sure to do it an angle like this, and you go one, two, three, four. This way, you're moving your whole body around. This way, after you finish so many strokes on this side, you turn it to this side, and you do it. Look at that. One, move the whole body, move the whole body. This way, you have controlled the angle very, very well. Most people have problems because they cannot control the angle. So when they move back and forth, back and forth, you're not having a smooth edge. After the rough side, you turn it to the other side and just do it the same way. One, two, three, four, five, six, you see? And then you turn it to the other side. You see this? Put a tiny bit of water. The reason why I didn't need you, this is a wet towel, just enough moisture here. This is a regular stone that most people already have, okay? Now this is the one, the professional use, okay? See, it's a three prone thing. One, two, three. And they use this in restaurants. But nowadays, you can even get one of these electric sharpener. Not only for your knife, but also for the cleaver, for my cleaver. All you have to do is turn it on. Go all the way. And the angle is magnetized. So when you put this in, the angle is anchored to the right angle. So you have perfect. Look at that. Very, very slowly. The magnet allow you to anchor the angle. The, oh, the also, the thing is, the wonderful thing is, the whole blade is running through without any problem. And it's very easy to do. Look at that. Then the last stroke, you do it a little bit faster. And then the next one to do is this. Oh, look at that. This is the homing, the homing. Holy, very slowly, the angle is perfect. Then you can do it faster. Only takes a few minutes. Then finally, really sharpen it, fine tuning. You get a little diamond vibration here, so you can do regular knife or my Chinese chef knife. Look at that. And now, one, two, once I finish, I wanna show you. Once I finish, I wanna show you this, okay? Here is a tomato. Ha! Amazing. Show you one more time. Ha, ha, ha. Look at that. It's amazing. Very, very sharp. You don't need this. This is so sharp. <laughs> Just to show you. Look at that. Three, two, one. Ha. Amazing. That's how I maintain a sharp knife. People don't believe you can actually sharpen a knife. Now, when the knife is sharp, I want to show you how easy it is to do this. Look at that. Parallel cut, very, very thin pieces. Look at this. Very one, two. Look at this. Very thin slices like that. And then you cut it. That's how you do it when you have a sharp knife. Look at that. And you can continue to do this. Okay. And then we're gonna get ready some asparagus and all the other ingredients. Okay. This is done. We're gonna marinate this beef with the following ingredient. A tiny bit of wine, and a tiny bit of soy sauce, and a tiny bit of egg white, and also some ginger, garlic, and cornstarch, and black pepper. This way, it would be really tasty already. And cornstarch, of course. You gotta have used cornstarch to seal in the juice, okay? Marinate it for a little while. Very easy to do. Make sure to marinate. Use, always use your chopstick. Now, a lot of people 
love asparagus. And also, this particular dish is actually served in a lot of Chinese restaurants. That's the reason why I want to show you how to do this. A lot of people probably know asparagus is very, very healthy because it is, has only 220 calories for the whole serving. And also, has a lot of vitamins, uh, vitamin C, vitamin B6, and thiamine, all kind of sodium and everything, low in sodium. And also, this is good because I am going to show you how easy it is to do this. Little peas, okay? Little enoki mushroom. I love enoki mushroom because it looks cute. And then some, a tiny bit of, oh, look at this. Shiitake mushroom, couple pieces, shiitake mushroom. And green onion. And of course, asparagus. Put it right here, look at that. Just put it right here. Also, the, the great thing about asparagus is it's easy to prepare. You, all you have to do is snap off the end and boil them, steam them, microwave them, or you can stir fry them, the whole spear. When you boil it or simmer it, all you have to do is do it for about three to five minutes. It's done, one, and I will quickly show you how to do another one. This is very, very easy to do. Once again, do it. You can do it very fast. Look at that. Nobody have to rush you, okay? Put it together, and you have this. So simple. When it's done, you are going to put a tiny bit of oil. You're going to brown this. Now, if you're concerned about the thing might come out, all you have to do is use a little toothpick to make sure to close the whole thing so they would not come out. See this? They wouldn't come out. This way, guarantee it would not come out. You brown this. If you want, you can brown two for each. So cooking for two, you have four. And we'll put all of these aside and put it back here so everybody can see. No problem at all. Brown it. In the meantime, you can make a little sauce, okay? All I have to do, it doesn't take too long to brown at all. All we have to do is make sure to put a tiny bit of teriyaki sauce, put a tiny bit of broth, okay? To let it brace for a little while. Oh, look at that. Let it brace for a little while. Turn them around. Doesn't take too long to cook at all. It's beautiful and it's very easy to do and nobody can miss. When it's done, and also it's beef, it doesn't take too long to cook. When it's done, you can put it right over here. Now, talking about asparagus, just in case your asparagus is a little bit wilted, no problem. Put some, put it right in ice cold water. Okay, we have one over here, remove the toothpick. Look at that, very simple to do. Without this, everybody can do it. Everybody can do it. Look at that. I don't know about you, I love this particular dish with asparagus. <laughs> After all these wonderful delicious dishes, you still don't have enough. Here's a dessert for two, pagoda fruit crisp. What I did is use some fried wonton wrappers and I layer it with all this seasonal fruit and stack it up like your favorite wonderful shortcake. Well, that is for our show, Cooking for Two. Till next time, be good to your loved ones. And remember, if Yen can cook, so can you. Jajen.